Hello everyone. Um, this is going to be the first video in a series I'm making on converting a APC uninterruptible power supply uh, into a budget pure sine wave inverter because usually those cost a pretty penny but you can get these APC units from electronics recyclers, Craigslist, eBay, wherever for pretty cheap. This is a 1500 volt amp so from the factory it's rated for a thousand watts continuous and I picked it up for $109 um, with working lead acid batteries, which I'll be replacing though, which we'll get to later. And so just a general overview is um, I'm planning to take this and add in FETs because it's only half populated right now because they use the same circuit board on the higher capacity models. Add some active cooling to the FETs here, the H-bridge and the transformer. Um, and then, so that we can support a higher continuous load, probably try and do about 1500 watts or maybe push it a little more from there. Um, and then replace this with an external lithium iron phosphate battery bank, which you can see I've got plenty of sitting around here. Um, so the biggest concern with these, once you add airflow, constant airflow to the MOSFETs, they seem to be all right from there's some other people who've done this with older units um, and I'll link to their videos in the description but these uh, these transformers um, are fairly lossy as, as most DC to AC conversions go and so you're worried about the heat of these and so these are actually rated here let me come around these are actually this class 180H means that these are rated up to 180 degrees Celsius so they can get really really hot um, by, well, pretty much anybody's standards. And apparently you only need to leave about a 30 degrees Celsius margin uh, for internal hotspots. So you can measure a case temperature on this guy of 150 degrees Celsius and everything is, is working happily. Um, and I got all that information from a YouTuber named Neuralnar and he modified an older one of these. So, I'll go ahead and get started and the first hiccup you run into with these newer units, this one is a 2016, is that they don't have uh, a directly accessible you know, serial port in the back here. You just have, well you have a serial port and you have a USB port, but the serial port doesn't support um, the kind of trick that makes this all work, this uh, APC smart protocol. If you come up in here. Yes, so the APC smart protocol basically was for the older units, it allowed you to control them completely via serial for automated installations and things like that where you wanted more control than the default software. And this, this smart protocol comes with a special mode where if you press, if you hook up to it via serial, which I'll get into, and you press one, which you can't see, and you press one a few seconds later, it'll come up into programming mode in here. Um, and that programming mode allows you to adjust various gains. Uh, most importantly, the battery constant gain, or the charge gain, and the load amplifier gain. So this is what allows you to tune, to, to override the factory settings for what this thing's allowed to continually output. Um, so obviously you have to be smart about that, but we'll be working on that with the active cooling and some temperature measurements. Um, but that's really nice because then it allows you to maintain all of the factory overload settings where it's allowed to overload for a certain number of seconds before it's shut off. And it still kind of behaves like a nice um, nice inverter, but you've just upped the power limit of it with the mods. And then you've, of course, done your supporting mods on the inside. And then the battery voltage gain is nice because we'll be able to change the charge, the upper charge limit of the... Uh, of the batteries to work better with the uh, lithium iron phosphate. You know, it, I imagine it could work too with a uh, with a lipo battery bank. I just don't know the the swing on those. I know they run a bit higher than lead acid, but this is 24 volt, so you could run a, a Tesla battery pack straight off this. Um, yeah. So first off, I will get into how I connected the serial and have got the smart protocol on these newer units that don't have a direct access in the back. The serial port in the back only supports the Modbus protocol, which gives you lots of nice diagnostic information, but doesn't let you do this programming. And so what that comes down to 
is the display here, which is not working because I haven't unplugged. Um, basically, the display is run via this comms processor board, which plugs in to these two headers there and there and kind of flips and sits upside down. And so that comms processor board talks to this other, there we go, processor right here that's actually running the UPS. And so these two modules internally still communicate using the APC Smart Protocol. So there's a programming header on the circuit board here, and you can see it's a, it's a six pin, and I'll give you the pin out for this in a moment, um, is the serial interface between these two boards. So when this board's plugged in, if you hook up to it, um, you can see them talking to each other. This board is every so often is sending requests, and the main processor is spamming back all that data, and that's how your front screen is working and is populated. And that's actually how, like when you press the on button here, it runs the, uh, it sends the command from the comms board to the main processor. So you can actually have full control over this via a serial interface. And so what we've done here is it's all 3.3 volt logic and pin one is this top corner here and pin six is kitty corner from that down on this side. And the way this is numbered is it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It kind of walks its way down the connector. And so that would mean that pin four here, so the middle of the side closest to the main chip is your ground. And then pins five and three are your serial lines. And if I read my cabling real fast, it looks like pin five is gonna be your TX, or U hookup TX, right? So it's this chip's RX. And then pin three is the RX on your adapter, which means it's this microprocessor's transmit pin. So that's how you're gonna be able to talk to this. And that was kind of the trick. Oh, and then the other trick is that, well, you just unplug the comms board. So that now you can talk on the comms port, port instead of fighting with the comms board for communication. So I'm sure you could get in there and there's a another YouTuber by, oh, what's his name? It's, um by the name of F.F. Kossag, who was able, did some work about making it so you could still talk with an external serial module and the comms board at the same time. Um, but I'm not interested in that. I'm really just gonna set, change the battery and load settings once and then plug this back in and let it operate and think everything's happy. First, I'm just gonna show you the, the, you know, the current state of the device. So you've got your serial device set up, it's on 3.3 volts, you've done the pinout like I talked about, and you open up PuTTY, um, and I guess I can run through the, uh, the PuTTY configuration real fast, should probably use a screen recorder, but that's too much work. So really in PuTTY, you come in here, set this to serial, for me this is going to be COM4, and you can look that up using device manager. And then you come and you go into your ports section, focus. You can see my USB serial port is number COM4. So I've got COM4 here. And then this device runs at a very slow baud rate of 2400. And so I go ahead and hit open. And you can see we've got nothing, which is normal. To put it into smart mode so it's ready to accept commands, you send a capital Y, so you hold shift, hit Y, now you get the smart mode back. And so we can look at some cool stuff, we can look at the, the current incoming wall voltage and things like that. Um, but what we care about is I believe the capital P command tells us the power. Um, and then O will do our output, so we're currently not All right. And you use the command, I did the wrong one there, you use the command control N. So you hit control N, you wait about a second, second and a half, you hit control N again, and you can hear, <laughs> you can hear this thing kick on. And so now we can hit shift O, uh, maybe Y, okay, you have to put it back in smart mode. Shift O, now we can see that our outgoing line voltage is 120 volts, shift P, so we're using 0% of our load capacity. So we come down here, I grab my heat gun, yippee, and we turn it on to one. 
One is about, I'm not sure, 700 watts or so. And so we hit shift P and now you can see we're using 68% of the load. And if I go ahead and kick the heat gun up to the high setting and hit shift P, we're using 127% of our load. And I was just hitting shift P there multiple times. So you can see currently we're, you know, we're overloading the unit. We'd be hearing an alarm or the front panel would be going off if it was hooked up, but it's not. So now we'll go ahead and modify the value and show that this load is being reported as a smaller load and won't be tripping any alarms. So what I'll show you now is if you remember, it, we were getting 127% on two, on setting two for the heat gun and about 66, 67, 68% on setting one for the heat gun. And so now if we come into, oh, focus. If we come into the smart mode, so we hit Y, gets us into smart mode. One, wait for a second, hit one again, we're in programming mode. Um, it's P gives us our power load gain. And so if we hit, hit it, we can see our default was DE or DD. And so that's a hexadecimal number. So if we come into here, we hit DD. So it's our current. So if we wanted to double the power output of this, which I'll just do for you know demonstration's sake, we want to divide that by half. So it's only reading half of the actual value. So you know, take that divided by two, and we can see the hex result is six e. So if we come here, hold minus. Yeah, you use the minus and plus keys to modify these values. So you hold minus, get all the way down to six. E, come back up a bit, and you can go ahead and hit enter, and then hit shift R, which will lock it out. So now we can come back into smart mode. We can look at our line in voltage, our line out voltage, out voltage, yep, and we can see shift P gives us zero because we've got nothing. And now if I turn it on to setting one, shift P now reports as 30%, 33, right in that area. And if I kick it up to the high setting, which was overloaded before, shift P, it only reports as 63. So we've successfully scaled these values by half. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to run this too long without the modifications. Things would start getting very hot very quickly. But this just shows that on these newer units, you can still get in here and modify the, uh, the power settings. Um, via just hooking into the internal programming header, which honestly isn't that bad. You know, you're removing six screws off the top and a couple of, uh, that one, unplugging that one board. So I think that's what we'll call it on this video. And from here on out, I'll do some tests. My next video will probably be tests of adjusting the battery voltage so that I can have it safely charge a lithium iron phosphate. And then going from there, we'll, we'll, uh, add some cooling and take some temperature measurements on the core here um, and, and see what we can do with this. You know, my end goal is to put this in like a, a rolling music case because this, this is a 2U unit. So if I got a 3 or 4U music case, I could have room for batteries underneath. Um, and then I'd probably, you know, take out the factory lead acid batteries and put a, a solar charge controller in here and get a, a real budget. Um, solar power generator with pure sine wave. I mean, getting a thousand, even if this only ever runs at a thousand watts continuous, pure sine wave for a thousand watts for a hundred dollars with all your safety features um, is fantastic value. So that's where we'll call this one. And uh, be sure to subscribe and like the video, and I'll, that way you get updated with the new stuff, and we'll keep you updated. Oh, and I'll, I'll post a bunch of links in the. Um, in the co well, the comments, the description of the sources I pulled from to learn this information. You know, there were two YouTubers who'd done this previously, and a couple of older websites that have the actual commands still stored. So I'll go ahead and link those in the bottom. But yeah, look forward to seeing y'all again and giving you an update. Bye bye.